مساء الخير عليكم آه النهاردة احنا هناخد حاجة جديدة اللي هي الفاريبل سامبلينج بلان انه كل اللي احنا خدناه لحد دلوقتي كان بيتحط تحت بند الاتريبيوت سامبلينج بلان و if you can remember at the beginning of the course we classified the different types of the acceptance sampling plan where we said that and we do have different criteria to classify them well, among which was the type of the quality characteristic of interest and we do have two types which are the continuous quality characteristic or we have a discrete quality characteristic if we have a discrete type then we use attribute sampling plan where we classify a units into confirming and non-confirming and we work with the counting the number of the defective items but if we are having continuous sampling plan then this means that in we will work with a variable sampling plan because we do some measurements and we don't count number of the defects but we work with the real measurements in the Attribute sampling plan, we took different types. We took the single type and we took the double. We took as an assignment the triple and then we took the sequential. For the variable sampling plan, we will take only two, a single case with a sequential case. In this chapter, we are going to see how can we design an acceptance plan whenever we have a quality characteristic of interest which has a continuous distribution. Actually, in most cases, we work with continuous measurement or we do have continuous measurements and whenever we receive a lot we would be able to take measurements from these lots however we tend usually to transform these measurements into attribute data by comparing the units with a specification limit lower or upper specification or both and identify each unit based on this comparison along with the specification limit whether it's defective or not by that, we change it into attribute data. By practicing, we find out that in the transformation of continuous data into attribute data leads us to ignore very important information, especially the information related to the quality level of the unit. Let's take an illustrative example to see how can transforming continuous measurements into attribute measurement lead to lose some information regarding the quality of the lots. Here is an example. Suppose that we are working on the weight of the bread and this is considered to be our quality characteristic of interest and that we are working only with a lower specification limit of 47 grams which means that and if the weight of the bread is lower than 47 gram it's considered to be defective and if it is greater than 47 grams this means that it is non-defective. Suppose that we apply a plan on these lots received from the bread where we take a sample of size n equal to 4 from these lots and we inspect this sample and the inspection here is by taking the weight for each, each item. The sample we drew, the weights were as follows, 10 grams, 20 grams, 40 grams and 50 grams. If you looked at these values and compared with the lower specification limit, you will find out that in the 10, will 20, will 40 are all less than a lower specification limit, which means that in these three are considered to be non-confirming or defective, while the 50 is greater than the 47, which means that in it is considered to be non-defective. But if you are working with the attribute plan concept, then this means that in we have d equal to 3 d the number of defective items in the sample but if you work it based on the fact you have measurements inside the sample you can calculate any sample statistic you need for example you can calculate the average calculating the average will provide you with 30 grams but let's suppose that in the next day we received another lot from the bread and we apply the same we applied the same plan on it by which we took a sample of size n equal to 4 and took the measurement of each item and found the measurements as follows 47 grams 46 44 and 43 if you can look at this sample you will find out that the 47 is exactly equal to the lower specification limit which means that we classify it as non-defective but if you looked at the 46 the 44 and the 43 you will find out that in the three of them are lower than a lower specification limit. This means that in the three are defective. 
So again, if I would deal with the concept of the attribute sampling plan, this means that we having D equal to three defective items in the sample. But if I'm going to work with the idea of a variable sampling plan, I would get use of these measurements by calculating any sample statistic like an average. Calculating this average, you will find out that the average of the second sample is 45 grams. Now, you have two different plans. You have two different samples. You have two different lots. The first lot provided you in the concept of an attribute that a you know, sample yields three defective items. The second lot provided you with a sample which yields to you again three defective items. So the first thought you would say that in you know, this lot has the same quality of this lot and maybe it would be a bad quality. However, if you looked at the averages and you looked at the values of the averages, you will find out that in the first lot provided you an average of 30 grams. Compare between this 30 gram and the lower specification limit, which is the whole 47. It's very far away from the 47, which is the lower specification limit, which indicates in the first lot was very, very bad or its quality was very, very bad. If you compared the second one, or if you looked at the second lot and you compared between the average that you obtained from the sample and the lower specification limit, you'll find that the average was 45 and the lower specification limit was 47, which means that an average of the sample was not that very far away from the lower specification limit. So again, I rejected the first lot and I rejected the second lot. However, the first lot the quality of it was very bad, but the second lot of the quality of it was almost close to the required quality, but it was very close to it. The information that in the quality of the first one was not the same as the second one, when the first one was very bad, when the second one was not, not that much of a bad quality, that we didn't know it from the attribute data. We did know it from the continuous data. So this means that in, if you based your decision on a sample average regard, rather than a, a binary classification of the items into confirming and non-confirming and counting the number of non-confirming items, that would be more accurate, would be providing you with more information whenever you take a decision regarding accepting or rejecting a lot. This is one of the advantages of a variable sampling plan over the attribute sampling plan and now but provide you more information than a whole basic binary classification will be able to take decision more accurate in regarding a lots like the chapter that is devoted to represent a variable sampling plan how can we design it will main definition بتاعها. take into consideration that in the variable sampling plan but depend on quality characteristic of interest that has a continuous distribution when at the same time we are working on a descriptive statistic of a sample where we should be knowing its, its probability distribution. Usually, the common descriptive statistics to be used they to be calculated in a sample could be sample average, could be variance, could be standard deviation, could be anything else. However, we usually prefer the sample average, the most commonly used. The main best idea of the design of the variable sampling plan is to be two main aspects. Basically, to know. الكواليتي الديستريبيوشن بتاع الكواليتي كاركترستيك اوف انترست اللي هي الاكس وتو نو البروبابيلتي ديستريبيوشن اوف السامبل ستاتستيك ذات يو ار جوينج تو يوز ان تيكينج الديسيجن ليه لانه زي بالظبط اف يو نيد تو كالكيليت البروبابيلتي اوف اكسبتنس ما هو البروبابيلتي اوف اكسبتنس هو البروبابيلتي تو تيك الديسيجن انك تو اكسبت اللوت وده is based على sample statistic إن هي الفاليو بتاعتها عالية ولا الفاليو بتاعتها قليلة فcalculating this probability meaning that you are calculating the probability إن x bar for example is taking a certain interval أو have a certain interval ده معناه إن in order to be able to calculate this probability you should be having information about the probability distribution of a sample statistic 
وقدام او يعني في النكست لكتشر هنشوف ان دي واحده من الديس ادفانتجز بتاعت الفاريبل سامبلينج بلان ان بتوصل لمرحله انه اف يو دونت نو ذا ديستريبيوشن يو ويل نوت بي ايبل تو ورك ويز ا فاريبل سامبلينج بلان فدايما هي بتحط عليك البيردن بتاع يو نو يو شود نو ذا ديستريبيوشن اوف اكس يو شود نو ذا ديستريبيوشن اوف الاكس بار اذر ذان ذات يو ويل نوت بي ايبل تو كالكوليت اني بيرفورمانس ماتش In this chapter, we will restrict our study on assuming that in the quality characteristic of interest but follow a normal distribution. Like in still, the same work can be extended on any other distribution. Type. What's the main idea of a variable sampling plan? The main idea is that you receive lots of size capital N. And again, I emphasize we are currently working on single sampling plan but of a variable type. So it is the same as the attribute one we took before. And you receive a lot of size capital N. You take a sample of size small n. Then you have to inspect each and every item inside this sample. And here the inspection is not by classifying it into confirming, non-confirming, a classification here to measure the each unit. Measuring by the weight, the height, the length, the width, anything, and then to calculate a statistic from these measurements. Commonly, we will calculate the average of this sample, which is the x bar. Here, the x bar bar bit play the same role of the d in the case of the elhaya. The attribute sampling plan. Usually, when we calculated the D, we needed an acceptance number of a defective item, which is C, in order to compare the D with the C and take a decision. It is the same in the variable sampling plan. You need to find a limit or a bound or a boundary in order to compare with the X bar. Based on this comparison, you should be able to take a decision. Similar to the acceptance to the attribute sampling plan, we call it the acceptance limit. But we refer to it with the symbol k. So the acceptance limit k, I have to compare the x bar with it in order to take a decision whether to accept or to reject the elhaya a lot. However, one of the main differences between the attribute or between the variable is that I will not be able to tell you here in the decision rule here a. No such decision rule is kept here. The decision rule will depend on the nature of the quality characteristic of interest. Because the quality characteristic of interest, for example, for example, is the time you wait till you have a service. لو حصل ان هي الفاليو دي زادت ده معناها ان هذا فاكتف سيرفيس يبقى in this case I should reject having this service if the x bar الفاليو بتاعتها increased يبقى exceeded the k لكن مثلا as for the example اللي احنا كنا نستخدينه بتاع البراد ويت هنا كل ما الويت بتاع البراد بيقل كل ما يكون ده حاجه مش كويسه يبقى in this case the decision would be ان if the x bar value is decreased يبقى in this case I should reject a lot يبقى the decision هنا ان الريجكشن جاي x bar less than ال k فهنا I cannot provide you with a general rule or a fixed rule here if you compare the x bar with k ولقيت كده accept or reject لا it depends on the nature of the اللي هي ال quality characteristic And then we ask for a designing of the plan, similar to the attribute. Whenever we said in the attribute sampling plan, design it, it means that find the an n and find the c. Here for variable sampling plan, design it, معناها find the an and find the k, such that they satisfy the producer risk alpha and the consumer risk, which is beta. Here is an illustrative example. Suppose we have a variable sampling plan for the weight of incoming juice packages for a certain restaurant and is defined with the following parameters. We have a small n equal to 20, capital N 1000, and the acceptance limit is 105, and the lower specification limit for the weight of the package is 100 gram. You need to interpret this plan. Type. Here you have to understand that you are working with a variable sampling plan, which means that you are not going to use a lower specification limit in classifying the items into confirming and non-confirming. All what you need to say that and I am going to take a sample and from the sample I am going to work with the weights of the packages and I'm going to calculate the X bar. 
However, here we would say that in the lower specification limit help you to identify whether a rejection should be when the quality characteristic decrease or the quality characteristic increase. So, if I'm having here a lower specification limit for the weight of the package, this means that in, if the weight of the package is lower than 100, it means that it is a defective package. This means that in the value of an X bar, if it was a small, such that it is smaller than 105, then this means that in the weights I used to calculate the X bar, it means most probably lower than a lower specification limit. In this case, in the المفروض الـ X bar whenever it is decreased such that it is lower than 105 the acceptance limit بتاعها I should reject يبقى الـ interpretation for this plan would be إنه we receive lots of juice packages of size 1000 we take a sample of size 20 packages we inspect each item inside this sample by taking its weight then we calculate the average of these weights, 20 weights, and compare it with 105. If it happens that in the X bar was lower than 105, I reject a lot. If the X bar is greater than or equal to 105, then I should accept a lot. This is the importance of a lower specification limit. Note that I didn't use it to classify all objects into uh, confirming or non-confirming and I use the acceptance limit this is the key I use the to compare it with the X bar so here this will let us to differentiate and it's very important to differentiate between the X and between the X bar the X here is referred to the items it refer to the quality characteristic of interest the values of the quality characteristic D وإنه ال X distribution of X هو اللي بيبقى concerned about the lower specification limit. The lower specification limit دي حاجة تخص ال X. لكن ما تخص ال X بار في حاجة. وإنه المفروض إنه all the number all the items lower than the lower specification limit بت represent defective items. وال area دي بت represent the percent of the defective items. However, the X bar, the X bar here, our distribution of the X bar, be represent the distribution of the mean calculated from different samples that could have been taken from the lot. Okay. Well, actually, the X bar we do not compare the X bar with the lower specification limit. The lower specification limit is put on so to compare with the unit one. Here, the X bar is put on so to compare with the K. The K is the limit of the X bar. The LSN is the limit of the X. So here, if we suppose that in the X we follow the normal distribution with parameter mu and sigma. For of course, X bar here command had to be follow a normal distribution with parameter mu and sigma over root n, which means that in here it has the same mu, however, it has narrower variation. Okay, so here you have to say that in if I am having lower specification limit, then the k would be on the left, such that in the X bar, if can it lower than the k, then I should reject a lot. This is a bad thing. If it is greater than the K, then this means that no, I should accept a lot. Similar case, if you do have an upper specification limit only, in this case, the K command had to be the Because here, the increase of the quality characteristic of interest be identify the defective items. This means that in the low hassle in the X bar bit increase, in this case, it has such that it has bit exceed the K, I should reject a lot. Okay, this is the main use of uh, uh, knowing whether I'm having lower specification limit or then I'm having upper specification limit. Type. Ningi for different types of variable sampling plan. Muhamma actually, there are three types. We will be depend on the availability of a specification limit. Remember, we do have two specification limits, lower limit and upper limit. Type. The first type is a type of variable sampling plan that has only lower specification limit. This means that you are working with a quality characteristic of interest that if it happens that in the values that is lowered, then I, it should be identified as defective items. Like the weight of the bread, the weight of the bread, low has in the weight. L, it will be considered to be bad quality. But if I don't have any concern, I don't have any problem. 
فان ذس كيس بيكون عندي الديستريبيوشن اوف ذا كواليتي كاركترستيك اوف انترست وود بي نورمال ويز باراميتر ميو اند سيجما وهنا each lot is received by average percent of defective item we called it اللي هي P if in this case if I'm having a lower specification limit then I should know that in all the area below a lower specification limit better represent a defective item and actually this area better represent a percent of a defective item here we have a new definition which is a mu. Actually, a mu, it is not just a parameter for the quality characteristic of interest. However, it is considered to be the process average. Here, a mu bit represent the average of the quality characteristic corresponding to the percent of defective item P. يبقى now a new اللي بتبقى calculated أو parameter of quality characteristic هي بتبقى عبارة عن a process Average corresponding to a certain level of percent of defective item. How is that? لو إحنا جينا فكرنا فيها, if we are working on the bread, the whole weight of the bread, and we are receiving lots of the whole bread, and we know that in these lots are received with average percent of defective item 10%. ده معناه ان you are receiving lots وانت عارف انه ال ال weights بتاعتها 90% on average هيكونوا محققين good weight وفي 10% منهم هيكونوا محققين very low weight اللي هما بنسميهم defective items يبقى in this case if you obtain the average of the weights in this lot فالaverage ده اللي هو الميو it is calculated in the light of having 90% good weights و 10% bad weights طب الميو دي تبقى ايه؟ الميو دي تبقى هي this value عشان كده بنقول now ان الميو بت represent the average of the quality characteristic of interest اللي بت correspond the percent of defective P طيب if I'm having a lower specification limit then what should be my decision rule هنا if it happens that in the value of the quality characteristic اللي هي x decreased this is considered to be a bad quality يبقى if I would calculate the x bar and the x bar value is low يبقى this means ان هي calculated من حاجة من weights او من characteristics او من quality characteristic value صغيرة يبقى in this case it represent bad quality يبقى I should reject فده يخلي ان هنا rejection rule بتا او decision rule في rejection ان انا هرجكت if the x bar is less than the acceptance limit k and I would accept if the x bar increased such that it exceeded the k اللي هي the acceptance limit this is the first type of a variable sampling plan we do have another type which is the upper specification limit and these are the plan وهم عندهم upper specification limit only طيب ده معناه ايه ده بالظبط زي اللي هو ال waiting time to have a service كل ما يحصل increasing في time كل ما انا ه classify service دي انها ليها bad quality طيب يبقى in this situation I would be working with equality characteristic of interest such that whenever its value increased I would classify it as defective يبقى أنا this means that أنا I'm having a limit here an upper specification limit all the values after an upper specification limit are considered to be defective and so this area bit represent a percent of a defective item so in this situation هتبقى الميو هتبقى bit represent a process average that correspond this percent of a defective item طب what about the decision rule in this case هنا أنا بقول إنه كل ما ال value of the quality characteristic تزيد كل ما ده بي indicate bad quality فأنا if I'm going to calculate the x bar وهبيز the distribution عليها فال x bar value كل ما يحصل لها increasing كل ما ده بي indicate bad quality يبقى the decision rule بتاعتي إن I should reject if the x bar increased such that it exceeded the k و I should accept if the x bar is less than or equal to الك ده طبعا هنا ال total opposite بتاع ال decision rule في حالة I'm having only lower specification limit the third type of a variable sampling plan إن يكون عندك both at the same time lower specification limit and upper specification limit which means that you are dealing with a quality characteristic of interest such that إنها لو زادت قوي أو قلت قوي this is considered to be a bad quality same thing إن 
you will be having a quality characteristic, uh, a characteristic and it follows the normal distribution. You have a lower limit, you have an upper limit, you have here some defective items, you have here some defective items. But هما الاثنين مع بعض بي representو LP اللي هو average percent of the defective item. In this uh, chapter, we will deal only, uh, we will assume all that we have only lower specification limit. يعني إحنا هنحط restriction on our work and إحنا we are working on having lower specification limit best. لكن the same idea or the same work can be easily extended to the case of having upper specification limit only or need to have both lower specification and upper specification at the same time. Okay, here we do have two important definitions in the acceptance or uh, in the variable sampling plan. Actually, one of them is the acceptable process average and the second is the rejectable process average. Can you remember in the attribute sampling plan when we worked, we said that in the lots di kullaha, they are received while having a percent of defective items, l'hiya p. Wainu, we have two types of these p. And then a P1, and then a P2. P1 bit represent an acceptable quality level, while P2 bit represent a rejectable quality level. This is the percent of defective items I accept to have in the lot. Well, this is the percent of defective items I reject to have it in a lot. Dilwati, in the variable sampling plan, I'm not dealing with P1 or P2 directly. Now I'm working with a process average represented by el mu, el hoa, el parameter of the distribution of el quality characteristic. So the first definition we have is the acceptable process average. We refer to the acceptable process average as mu1. It actually bit represent the average of the quality characteristic that corresponds the percent of defective item P1. That is, if I'm having the quality characteristic of interest like this, following a normal distribution, and I know that and then I'm having a percent of defective items that is equal to P1%. Type. If I'm going to calculate the average of these quality characteristic values in the existence or in the presence of P1% of defective items, what would be this Average. This average would be mu1. So mu1, it is the average that corresponds the existence of acceptable percent of defective items for lot. That's why we say that in the mu1 is considered to be an acceptable average of the quality characteristic that correspond the acceptable quality level. Okay. Similarly, we would be having the rejectable process average. Or rejectable process average, we will refer to it as a mu2. Well, mu2, it will represent the average of the distribution that corresponds the rejectable quality level P2, which means that if you have a process and this process have a P2% effective items, then calculating the average of the values uh, of this quality characteristic in the presence of P2 هاته طلعني هي ميو 2 فالميو 2 بنسميها في الحالة دي الرجكتبل بروسس أفرج these the ones that إن هما مفروض يعني بي بي بيحلوا محل ال P1 وال P2 في حالة اللي هو ال attribute sampling plan طيب نيجي بقى ل designing the variable sample plan Again, similar to the attribute sampling plan, whenever I need to design the attribute, I said that find N, find C that satisfy the alpha and the beta. Here, I'm searching for this time N and K that satisfy alpha and beta. If again, I'm designing a variable sampling plan, meaning that and then I'm searching for N and I'm searching for the acceptance limit K that satisfy the alpha and the beta. Type. Again, it's the same steps I should have followed in the attribute sampling plan. And then I write down the equation between alpha, write down the equation between beta, solve them simultaneously. Then I'm going to have two equations for two unknown. Even in this case, I have to write them down and work them out simultaneously. But let's remember. الالفا كانت بتريبريزنت اللي هي البروديوسر ريسك والبيتا كانت بتريبريزنت الكونسيومر ريسك 
وافتر اول هما كانوا بيريبريزنتوا probability of accepting and probability of rejecting والاكسبتنس والريجكشن النهارده بقى بيتعامل in terms of the x bar يعني معناها ان you are going to find the probability of x bar something x bar greater x bar less than يبقى ده معناه ان هنا الالفا والبيتا بتدبند on the sampling distribution of the sample statistic يعني the probability distribution of the x bar So here we shall see by a derivation of how can we find the n and how can we find the here the case resolving the alpha or beta مع بعض and I remind you again that we are working assuming we have lower specification limit only and that we are working under the assumption and the quality characteristic of interest that follow a normal distribution. Okay, so here we need back to find the n and k. So need we need to work on the alpha or beta. So let's recall what was alpha. Alpha was the producer risk, and what was the producer risk? It is the probability to reject a lot, although it was produced at the acceptable quality level. Type. When do we reject a lot now? We reject a lot in case of having a lower specification limit whenever the x bar is less than the k. And now we have an acceptable quality level. It's not called the p1. It's now called the mu1. So this means that in the probability to reject the given acceptable quality level, it is the same as saying it is the probability that in the x bar is less than k, given in the process average is equal to mu1. Tab, what about the beta? The beta bet represent the consumer risk. Well, consumer risk meaning that in to accept a lot, although it was produced at the rejectable quality level. And when do I accept a lot? I accept it whenever the x bar is greater than or equal to k. So this is equivalent to saying find the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to k given the mu two. Well, mu two here will be represent a rejectable quality level. هنا we need to expand these two equations اللي هما الألفا والبيتا بس عشان to be able to expand it you have to find what is mu1 and what is mu2 هنا mu1 و mu2 are أنا كل اللي عرفه هو p1 و p2 mu1 و mu2 بالنسبة لي I don't know any information about it وأنا كمان معرفش ال values أنا اللي لسه بعمله إن أنا قبل ما أعمل أي حاجة أنا متفقة أنا ال producer وال consumer مع بعض إنه ال p1 بتاعتها هتبقى قد إيه وال p2 قد إيه بس هنا I need بقى to calculate first the mu1 corresponding to this p1 and mu2 that correspond to this p2 عشان to be able to calculate the alpha and the beta. If in order to find the values بتاعت the mu1 and mu2, you have to depend on the p1 and the p2. طب how is that? طب let's first start with finding the mu1. The mu1 will depend on the p1. As you can see, in Nana Hina, if I'm having a distribution of the x, what is the definition of the p1? The p1 هي عبارة عن the percent of the defective items in the presence of a quality characteristic that has this distribution with parameter mu1. So actually. The defective item will happen when the x is lower than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification limit. So I can say that in this area presented by P1, it is about the probability that the x is less than the lower specification phi of this value. El phi here bet represent the CDF of the standard normal distribution. Type based on the fact that Nana ba ul here p1 bet say with this probability d bet imply that in Nana I am searching for a cumulative probability that corresponds to this value. 
طيب ما أنا ممكن أعمل ال inverse of this relation إن أنا ممكن أقول إن أنا I'm searching for the value corresponding to phi inverse of p1 and what is a phi inverse p1 phi inverse p1 this is a cumulative probability وهنا this means that I am searching for the value in z the table that correspond the cumulative probability p1 in other word I am searching for a value here from the z probability such that in the area on its left side is equal to p1 ده معناه ان انا ممكن اريبليس الفاي انفرس اوف بي 1 with negative z p 1 ليه لان انا هنا i am searching for value such that in the area on its left هي عباره عن p 1 p 1 دي عباره عن value very small لان a very small probability it will never exceed 0.5 ده معناه ان لازم الفاليو دي تيجي تقع هنا في النيجاتيف بارت طب وليه انا سميتها z p 1 زد بي 1 وايل اجنورينج بقى هنا النيجاتيف ساين دي زد بي 1 ديت معناها ان ات از ذا فاليو اوف زد هافينج اريا اون اتس رايت ايكوال تو بي 1 بس انا اي نيد ذا سيم بس ويز ا نيجاتيف ساين عشان انا ام وركينج اون سيمتريكال ديستريبيوشن يبقى in this case I can say that إنه this probability أو this value اللي هي ال LSL minus mu one sigma it is equivalent to negative z p one هي دي ال value اللي يجي على on its left area equal to p one طيب working this out I can deduce ال equation بتاعة ال mu one it would be equal to lower specification limit plus z p one multiplied by its sigma I can do the same for the mu2. The mu2 هي عبارة عن the process average that corresponds the p2. يبقى in this case I will work the same. إن أنا the p2 هنا بت represent the percent of the defective items for the x distribution when it is distributed with a when it is parameterized by the mu2. يبقى in this case I can define this area as P2 equal to probability in the exit cone lower than the lower specification limit given in the mu is equal to the mu2. Then I should standardize it. Then I would change the x into z and I would subtract the mu2 from the lower specification limit and divide by sigma. And since it's a probability z less than, so this is a cumulative probability, so I can replace it with phi of lower specification limit minus mu2 over sigma, where again, in the phi, it represents the CDF of a normal distribution. Again, I can write this as an inverse. Hena, ana badawar, what is the probability of this value? Mungkin agib al inverse, we have a meaning that, and ana am searching for the value in the Z table that corresponds the probability or the cumulative probability P2. In other words, I am searching for the value from the Z table such that it has area on its left equal to P2. Again, the P2 is very small value. It will never exceed 0.5. Even in this case, I should expect in this value it would be in the negative area. If I can call it negative z p2 equal to lower specification limit minus. If this value I'm searching for is equivalent to negative z p2. Working this out, I can reach the formula of the mu2, which is the lower specification limit plus z p2 sigma. Okay. So now we obtained the mu1 and we obtained the mu2, so we can return back to the alpha and the beta equation and work them out or solve them simultaneously so I can get to the n and the k. Again, I should return back to the alpha and the beta and try to calculate them to find the n and k. So again, I'm having here the alpha, which is in the probability x bar less than k given mu1. طيب I can now standardize the x bar minus the mu one divided by sigma over square root n. The same will be done on the right hand side. So this means that I'm having probability z less than certain value. Having probability z less than this means that I'm searching for a cumulative probability. If this means then I can replace probability z less than with the CDF symbol, say the phi of the k minus mu one over sigma over square root n. Here, this means that in 
in the probability of this value is equal to alpha. I need to know what is this value. So I can write it down as an alpha inverse of alpha is equal to k minus mu1 over sigma over square root n. So again, I am searching for this value in the z table. I'm searching for this value in the z table such that it has an area on its left or its left action, the cumulative probability equal to alpha. Again, alpha is considered to be a very small value, like 0.05. This means that in this value I'm searching for is considered to be negative. Yeah, here corresponds to negative Z alpha. Here, I'm searching for this value. Here, the value is the K minus mu1 over sigma over root n, such that it has an area on its left equal to alpha. I'm searching for this equal to alpha. يبقى I can say that in k minus mu1 sigma over root n is equal to negative z alpha. Working this out, I'm now having an equation function for k or function for n. I will get the k. We can deduce that in the k is equal to mu1 minus z alpha sigma over square root n. Note here in the k is written in terms of alpha and mu1. اللي هي جاية من عند p1. أنا I will call this equation number one. طيب. What about the beta? The beta bit represent the probability of the acceptance. The probability of acceptance be happen when it becomes the x bar greater than. As you can see, we are doing the work with the x bar to be less than, so that it will be less than, so that I can get the cumulative probability. So instead of working with the beta, I work with the complement, which is one minus beta, so that I can get the direction of the inequality to be less than. For 1 minus beta equal to probability x bar less than k given the maradi mu2. Then I should standardize it. Then it would be probability z less than k minus mu2 over sigma over square root n. This would be the cumulative probability. So I shall write it as phi of k minus mu2 over sigma over square root n. Then I shall do the same. I will get the phi inverse. So phi inverse of 1 minus beta is equal to this value. Note that at this time, I am searching for this value such that it has an area on its left, as in the cumulative probability equal to 1 minus beta. Beta is considered to be a very small number. Well, 1 minus beta is considered to be a very large number. 1 minus beta had the أكيد ال 0.5 لأن البيتا ممكن تبقى 0.1, 0.2 فال 1 minus beta تبقى 0.8 أو 0.9 ف this means that إن this value اللي هي ال k minus ال mu2 over sigma over root n it should be located في ال positive area بتاعة ال standard normal distribution فهتلاقي إن this is the value I am searching for اللي هي ال k minus ال mu2 over Uh, sigma over root n such that it has an area on its right equal to 1 minus beta. يبقى في الحالة دي يطلع انها equivalent to z beta. لان z beta z with a subscript beta معناها it is the value of z having area on its right equal to beta. وهي نفسها انه لو هو على يمينه بيتا فاي كده هيكون على شماله الكمبلمنت بتاعها 1 ماينس بيتا يبقى I can say that ان z beta is equal to k minus mu2 over sigma over square root n. Working this out with respect to k, I can find that NLK is equal to mu2 plus z beta sigma over square root n. Here, note this is another equation for the k, but this time it is written in terms of beta and mu2. So we will call this as equation number 2. Now we found the equation of LK. All what we still we have is to find an equation for the n. Here I'm having a first k in the equation 1, it was function only also in the n. Equation 2, the k is written also in terms of the n. So I can solve these two equations together. So we can deduce from equation 1 that the k is equal to this. While for equation 2, we deduce that the k is equal to this. وهي actually هي 1k أنا بعمل comparison للx bar ب1k ما هياش 2k فال acceptance limit هو 1 يبقى this means إن this equation should be equal to this equation طب equalizing both of them يبقى we will have إن mu1 minus z alpha sigma over square root n equal to mu2 plus z beta sigma over square root n 
In this case, in, in order to be able but to deduce an n, we have to substitute with the equation of mu1 and mu2 we have previously derived. We know that in the mu1 is equal to a lower specification limit plus zp1 sigma, while mu2 can be lower specification limit plus zp2 sigma. But I shall take these two and substitute in this equation. And here we did that. Here is the lower specification limit, here is the values, and so on. And I can cancel lower specification limit with this lower specification limit. So this is the remaining equation. As you can see, in each item in this equation have sigma. So I can divide by sigma to, so that I can cancel it. So after dividing by sigma, the remaining would be zp1 minus zp2 equal to z alpha plus z beta multiplied by 1 over square root n. So dividing by z alpha plus z beta here, it will be remaining 1 over square root n. Then I can take the reciprocal or I can invert them. Yep, uh, Z alpha plus Z beta to tafu, Z P1 minus Z P2 tends to that. And then I should take the square so that I can uh, get rid of the square root. This is the equation of Ln. Note here that we have one equation for the N while we have two equations for Lk. One of the cases is function for alpha, and another is function in the beta. Or it depend on z alpha, or it depend on z beta. Type. Why is that? Now, if we return the kida can fi previous note I said in the class in no, the alpha and beta are considered to be probabilities. So you cannot satisfy probabilities exactly. So into عشان to achieve them, into بتختار واحدة to achieve it exactly, and the other you achieve it approximately. But in this situation, we would say that in, if you need to achieve the alpha, achieve the alpha exactly, you should use the k that it depends on the z alpha. While if you need to achieve the beta exactly and the alpha approximately, then you should use the k that depend on z beta. In all cases, whether you use this or you use this, the n is fixed to be this equation. By that, we finished the first part of the variable sampling plan. The next time, we will take the advantages and the disadvantages of the variable sampling plan along with a practical example.